Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a new video series about pattern recognition and machine learning. If you're interested in the math behind artificial intelligence and machine learning, this is the exact video series for you. You can check out other videos on the right or down in the description. We start with a basic introduction of polynomial curve fitting. Let's jump right in. We would like to solve a simple regression problem. What is a regression problem? We observe an input, that's our x, and we would like to predict the target variable, t. So how does it might look like? Let's see we have these observations. The red dots are our observations. And the gray graph is a sine curve. So if you only see the red dots, you might think about that they resemble a sine curve somehow. And you might guess that it is a sine curve. But as soon as it's, if it's not a sine curve, you're, you're going to have difficulties guessing the function behind those observations. And this is the exact thing that we would like to solve. So we see only our observations, the red points. And with this knowledge, we want to predict something new. So if we have a different input, for example, this one, x here, we would like to predict a possible output in our case, a t. So this is our goal. We have n observations. The, these are the red dots that we already have. They are packed in a vector. So if it's thick, we have a vector. And we have the score corresponding target variables t. And they go from 1 to n because we have n observations. And now the question is, how can we learn from this regularity in the observations? So this is, oh, that's an eraser. So how can we learn this regularity by just seeing the observed data? But the, the point is that we do not have the exact observations. So you see that the points are not exactly on the sine curve and they are corrupted by noise. And we have to take these noise, this noise into account. So we do the approach based on curve fitting. We define a general function, a general polynomial functions that we think might resemble our data. So we have a function called y that is dependent on x and w. And the, w, the w's are very important. So the x is basically our input. That's what we give the function. And it give, gives us the output. And the w's are, are, are the coefficients of the x. So we start out with a w0. That's our basically constant. Then we have a linear term of w1 times x. Then we have w2. It's the quadratic and then cubic and so on and so on. And we can write this in a compact form. So we have a sum that goes from 0 to m. m is our degree of the polynomial times x to the power of j. So we have a 3 here and a 3 here. And it continues till m and m. So we have a non, our function is nonlinear in the x, but it's linear in the coefficients w. And the coefficients w are those coefficients that we can adapt so our function fits the data as close as possible. And because our coefficients are not in a sine functions or cubed or whatever, we call them, uh, they are linear. We call this function a linear model because the terms that we can change are linear. So if we derive them once, they disappear. And our goal is to find the optimal parameters w. So this is our function. And now we can choose the degree of the polynomial. And now and then we have to adapt our w's. So let's continue. The question is, what is optimal? So what are the, the right w's that we have to find? To solve this, we introduce an error function. And the error function just tells us how wrong we are with the selected w's. So here we have a uh, just, for example, a random uh, error function that will come in handy later. So 
if we just look at the function, you see that this is our function that we think might be our actual uh, graph that uh, or a function that we want to find. And this is the corresponding target vector. So we, if we input our x here, we get, for example, let's choose this point, we get this output. But the actual target is this one. So we have a difference. And we square this difference and divide it, uh, multiply it by a half. So this is basically a, you can imagine this as a square and we take half of it. And our goal is to minimize this area. And as soon as we found all the, all the correct W's, the curve will go through each and every data point. And this is exactly where the error is zero. So, and this is what we are trying to get. We can, we're trying to solve or basically to find W's so that our function is, it goes through each data point, each training data point. But this is of course very difficult because if we think that it is, that it's a sine function, but we have the data corrupted by noise, we will never fit a perfect sine function through the corrupted data. But we want to get as close as possible so that the area, this one, our error area, will be as small as possible. But how do we find a minimum of this function? Because we want to minimize the error to get as close as possible to the right prediction. And we do this by derivation with respect to w. This is very important because normally we derive with respect to x, but in this case, we're changing the parameters w, and this is why we have to derive by w. So let's have an example. So this is our error function. We have a half times the sum over all data points. Then we have a sum of all uh, the, of the polynomials uh, to degree m, and of course our target that we are given. So let's see, we have here, we have three data points. That's the one, that's the, the second one, that's the third. And for this, we chose a degree zero. So basically a straight line. And we want to find out where do we place the line that our error, this is that area basically, is as small as possible. Let's remove this. So I just wrote it out. So we have a half. This is our uh, function. Our, so our, um, our straight line minus the target vector to the power of two plus that's the other term. We're summing over this one. So we have w0 times minus t1 to the power of two and w0 minus t2 to the power of two. So this is, this is that, this is that, and that's here. And the n, so this, the other sum is the whole thing. That's this one, and that's this one, and that's this sum. Sometimes it's very confusing to see where the terms are coming from. So I'm just trying to explain where each uh, portion of this function came from. So we're basically just wrote all, uh, we removed the compact notation and now we have everything written out. So the next goal is to derive by our, uh, by W because the W is the thing we want to find out. And now we have to derive it and get the minimum of the error function. So in this case, it's again, very easy. We just derive by W zero. So the two gets in front is reduced to one and the half is gone. So we have just three simple terms left. We can rewrite the whole thing. We have three times W zero minus T one minus T two minus T three. And this has to be zero because this is our minimum. Uh, basic math, we get to W is the same as W zero is the same as T one plus t2 plus t3 divided by three, and this is four thirds. So it's basically 1.3. And if we look at that, this is actually the right, uh, the 
or basically the easiest way to see how we can uh, fit a uh, polynomial of a certain degree to the data. But because this is a fairly simple example, I have another one for you. This time we have three points. So we have point one, this is that one. We have point two, this is this one. And we have point three, this is that one. So we have three points and we choose degree one. So we choose a straight line. And now we have to find out where do we fit, uh, what parameters W do we choose to have the optimal uh, line through as many data points or basically as close through the data as possible. So this is our polynomial that we choose. We have W0 plus W1 times X. So again, we have the error function and this is just one single option to choose the error function. The error function can be chosen arbitrarily but in this case, with the derivation, it uh, simplifies the whole problem so that it's useful for understanding what is actually going on. So by deriving, we get rid of the one half, we get rid of the power of two, and we have the x that comes from the derivation of the w's here. So written out, we have this function. So we have a half. This is our polynomial minus t plus uh, the polynomial again minus t, in this case t1 and t2, and then we have again the polynomial minus t3. Now, because we have two uh, w's, we have w0 and w1, we want to find the local minimum with respect to uh, w0 and w1. So now we have two terms. So we do the same thing, we derive by w0, we get this one, and we get if we derive by w1, we get that one. This is a fairly lengthy mathematical operation to find those two uh, parameters. It's just, uh, it takes a lot of time if, we do, if you do it by hand. So it can be written in matrix notation and even uh, derived with the probability functions. So if you're interested in that, this will come definitely in another video. So just to summarize, in polynomial curve fitting, we try to create a function that fits the data as close as possible. We have the observations x and we have our targets t. We do this by a approach of polynomial curve fitting. So we define a polynomial that we will adapt as much as possible to fit the data as close as possible. To define what is as close as possible, we have a error function where in this case we took the uh, squared loss. So we have our polynomial minus the target. We square that. So the plus and the minus doesn't cancel out and we always have a positive sum. Uh, this is the visualization. So we have some polynomial and our error that we are trying to minimize. The goal is to get to error is zero and that, in other words, the error is zero if our function passes through each training point. And we do this, uh, we do redu reduce the error by uh, deriving the error function with respect to w, this is very important. And in the easy cases, we can solve this by hand. And in the more complicated ones, it might be advantageous to do this with a computer or even in matrix notation. I hope I could give you a general overview of what polynomial curve fitting is. And based on this knowledge, we will continue with the other videos and I'll hope to see you next time.